Hey guys, uh, welcome to another video. My name is Mac. In my previous video, we just saw how an internet works. That is, the explanation was completely based on hardware, how signals are being transmitted from point A to point B and back from point B to point A. Now in this video, we are going to see how a web page works. What happens when you type www.google.com? www stands for World Wide Web, which refers to your internet. The middle part, which is the Google, is called or referred as domain name and the third part, .com, is referred or called as top level domain. Let's see how this particular page gets access. Uh, before we could start off with the explanation of how a web page works, let's quickly see how a particular web page is built. So this particular domain name can be anything, it can be your company name or whatever it is, but it has to be purchased from another company which is called the registry but okay for example uh, we have companies like godaddy.com in india who can sell the domain names but my question is who authorizes these companies to sell the domain name it is ICANN, which is internet corporation for assigned names and numbers so this is the regulatory authority which controls the entire internet it is based out of Los Angeles and it is a non-profit organization. So this ICANN authorizes certain companies like godaddy.com which are also known as registries to sell the domain name. And they are also responsible for the existence of top level domain names such as .com, .gov, .in, .org. These top level domains are sold by ICANN to companies like godaddy.com which are also referred as registries through bidding. There are also certain companies which are authorized by ICANN which are referred as registrars which have uh, which can sell both domain name as well as top level domain names. The difference between a registry and a registrar company is that a registry is a company which can sell a domain name and a registrar is a company which can sell a domain name as well as a top level domain name. These two companies, registries and registrars are authorized by ICANN which is having built your web page, the ICANN allows an IP address to your web page which is connected to your domain name. IP address stands for Internet Protocol Address. IP address is an address like any other address. Let's say you stay at your home and your home has got a particular address. And if a person wants to meet you, he has to follow that particular address, right? Similarly, every web page has got an IP address which is allotted by ICANN. By changing that particular IP address, you cannot reach out to that particular web page. Like changing your address will not make people reach out to you. In short, when you're accessing a web page, you are actually accessing that particular web page through its IP address. IP address in general is a combination of digits, numerics, alphanumerics, symbols, etc. It is not possible for us to remember this combination. Therefore, it is generally connected to the domain name. So when you're actually typing a domain name, you're actually typing the IP address for that particular web page. Let me explain it to you with an example. When you want to access google.com, you type google.com on your browser. But technically, you are typing the IP address of the google.com, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 in this case, it is very easy to remember these four digits. But there are so many websites in this world for which the IP addresses cannot be remembered. So this IP address is generally linked to the domain name. Uh, in short, we can also say that IP address is a readable form of domain name. And not only every web page, every device that is connected to the internet, be it your mobile phone, be it your laptop, be it your computer or whatever it is, everything has got an IP address with which you ca particular device can be tracked. The devices that are used to convert domain names into IP addresses are called domain name servers. So when you type in a particular web page, the signals are being sent to DNS, which are domain name servers. Thereon, these signals are converted into IP address so that a particular web page is being accessed. The DNS can be configured in such a way so that a particular website can be blocked by blocking the IP address of that particular website. Let's say you want to block google.com. 
So the DNS has to be configured in such a way such that 8.8.8.8 is blocked. Now if you want to access google.com which is a blocked web page from your DNS, you have to get connected to another DNS which is generally referred as public DNS which is not configured to block any IP address. Let me remind you once again these IP addresses that are being allotted to a particular web page is allotted by ICANN. So ICANN at any particular given point of time can block the IP addresses or can change the IP addresses so that the complete web page is down. Let me explain it to you with an example. Your residential address is being allotted to you by your government. Now if a person who wants to reach you has to access that particular address so that he can reach you. Now if the address is changed he cannot reach you right. So exactly this is what happens. I can can change the IP address so that the particular website is made unusable for the users to access. To tell you there are about 7 people in this world who can completely shut the internet down. Uh, let me explain it to you. We know the regulatory authority of internet is ICANN okay, who allots the IP address for each and every web page. Now what happens is ICANN has selected their own people who are about 7 of them working in their own organization who are from the security department and they have given 7 keys to uh, I mean each one of them is carrying one individual key which is given by ICANN. So each one of them have been given one particular key and this key is uh, the key for the security room where they have lockers inside which a particular smart card is kept. This smart card is used to access the database server of, <coughs> uh, of the, uh, database servers of ICANN. Now what happens in case of exigencies or con uh, contingency or if there is a security threat. These seven people have to report to the ICANN headquarters and they, uh, they are supposed to carry their keys with which they can open the rooms and from where they can open the lockers and they can access the smart cards. Uh, with the help of these smart cards, they can access the servers uh, through which the IP address is being allotted to any one particular web page. Uh, since they have access to the IP address now, they can do two things. One, either they can completely delete the IP address for that particular website, uh, website uh, because of which the particular website becomes unusable or they can interchange the IP address between two uh, websites, uh, uh, let's say uh, Google and YouTube. Google has an IP address of 8.8.8.8 and uh, let's say, uh, I'm not sure, I'm just saying YouTube has an IP address of 1.1.1.1. These are the IP addresses allotted to Google and uh, YouTube by ICANN. Now let's interchange them. Let, uh, after interchanging, Google, uh, Google's IP address becomes 1.1.1.1 1 and uh, YouTube's IP address becomes 8.8.8.8 done that let's see what happens when you type google.com on your browser the signals are being sent to your dns now since the ip addresses are being interchanged when you type google.com actually youtube opens and when you type youtube.com google opens so this is how i can uh, i can and the seven people who are authorized by i can to change the ip address or block the ip address can crash the system completely let me explain it to you with an example. Let's say we have two friends, A who stays in India and B who stays in America. So the address of A is India and the address of B is America. Okay, both these addresses have been allotted by the respective governments, that is ICANN in our case. If a third person C wants to meet A, he has to go through his address, which is India. And if he wants to meet B, he has to go through his address, which is America. The ICANN, which is referred to as the government in this case, has actually changed the address in their database. So address of A has been made as America and address of B has been made as India, wherein A actually stays in India and B actually stays in America. If a person C wants to meet A, he will be landing up in America as per the new address and he will be meeting B. And if he wants to meet B, he will be landing up in India and he will be meeting A as per the new address. Right? Because the addresses have been interchanged by the government, which is ICANN in our case. Right? That is how when you type Google, you land up opening YouTube and when you type YouTube, you land up opening Google.
Other way of shutting the system completely down is deleting the IP addresses. That is India and America in this case, right? So the corresponding address of uh, A, which is India, is also deleted, and the address of B, which is America, is also deleted. Now, when you put in a particular, uh, when you type in a particular web page in your browser, since the IP addresses are not available, neither you are going to meet A nor B. That is neither Google opens nor YouTube. Uh, let me remind you once again only the ICANN can change the IP addresses can block the IP addresses from the, uh, their end so that is how they can completely get the internet down or completely confuse the system the keys that are being held by these seven people are being regenerated every quarterly that is every three months as these keys are uh, encrypted keys so every three months these people uh, they are supposed to meet at the headquarters of ICANN and the new key is generated and it is handed over to these seven people what happens if the internet goes down completely is it possible for us to have our own internet what happens if the ICANN decides to shut the system completely by blocking all the IP addresses and getting the system completely down is it possible for us to have a small internet yes it is completely possible one such situation had occurred in Haiti in 2010 where a severe earthquake has knocked out all the communication cables due to which the internet and the entire communication system was completely down at Haiti so in response to this and in order to help the people of Haiti, there was a project that was initiated in Australia called the Sev uh, Serval Project, where all the mobile phones were connected internally through a specific data, forming a small mesh net. As all the mobile phones were connected internally through a particular signal, now it was possible for them to share the data internally. This had resulted in the formation of a small internet where the data could be transferred among themselves and they could share all the information and data among themselves through that small internet that they had built themselves. There are certain software is available on iOS platform as well as the Android platform which when installed on a mobile phone will help you to transfer data to another mobile phone which has got the same software installed. When the software is installed, all you need is an active or a Bluetooth connection and that's it. You can start transferring data in case if the other mobile phone has installed the same software.